so talus is lienda as the coquelem culeguen, Vesesia Kala today. Si no umfundis um magarane with a topic on on the doctrine of predestination. Uh, maybe I, I, I should also apologize for uh, the past few weeks. We had hiccups uh, in in connection with the uh, uh, load shedding, connectivity, and, and all that. But Yabonga Gusis Linda, who managed to do a presentation last week, and uh, we appreciate that. So immediately, Usis Linda, I tried to go to Kulegela, says, Oh, Nigazela, straight away, Umpun Sumagan, and to take us through the presentation. Yeah, we give you honor and we give you all the praise. When I went to Ufanelwe Ubongwa, Ufanelwe Nkosi, Nogutunyiswa. We thank you, Spirit of the Living God, for this day, Moye Ingwele. Usugu Owa Ultalile, Wasema Pagati. You knew, Baba Nkosi, Oguti, on this day, Sine Bible study, we will have uh, three of our esteemed uh, people, Moyo Ingwede, Umfundi Sutati, Dr. Zibi, Klope, No Puti, Wagamdolo, Udumelo, Be Celebrator, Ipethe Yab. We thank you, Spirit of the Living God, that they even took time, Oguti, by Celebrator, uh, in this platform, they could be anywhere else uh, in, in the world, but they decided to, to sit here with us. We know, Baba you choose you chose us from yourself before the foundations of this world. Little Baba Nkosi lizwilako, labo that we predestined, Baba Nkosi wababiza. Because you have known us, you called us, you justified us, and you glorified us in the name of Jesus Christ. What is as men's in Gumfanegi so wait? Sizela and again goes to Missa, Ekamen Lenkosi to Chesu Christo, Goba Ubonile, Uguti Kose, Uguti, you give yourself more in when to us, Ekamen Lenkosi to Chesu Christo. Namanja Moyingwell, touch our spirits, touch our souls more in well, so that even our bodies will prosper as our souls prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Spirit of the Living God, for being with us. Gobushilo, what must be built? But how to stand in the coming link of the future? So Christ, when you come, can you not? We thank you, Gemoye Ingwele, for your visitation with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Imagine a parade. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, the platform is yours, but uh, good evening, Bazalon. I I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Amen. I'm not sure if if my video is not disturbing the uh the output uh, i i have to start like an african africans uh every time they start they start with an apology so i think i i have to do that now uh, there are a few things that you are going to have to deal with uh, today with me. Uh, the first is that 
uh, I am not in the best of health. Uh, so that uh, that already is is a handicap. It has frustrated uh, my preps, but I suspect it's it's also going to to frustrate how I deliver this presentation. But the second thing is that uh, I do not normally write. I talk like we do around the fire. And so we, we just have to depend on the recording. Um, Faku, because of, of my poor health, uh, I am going to depend on on colleagues present uh, in terms of tackling questions and answers. But otherwise, I'm going to, to attempt to grapple uh, with you friends uh, on this doctrine uh, of predestination. And uh, it is topics such as this that that actually take me back to when we started in the ministry. Now, now that uh, Umkulua has gone to the sixth floor, you you should uh, ordinarily expect that those of us strolling now uh, around the fifth one. Uh, we are beginning to have rights to say when we started. Uh, the same way that they used to do with us uh, when they want to intimidate us into listening. Uh, they would normally say, yes, Katikunga, Nati, Nabufundi, see me, Bugunge. It, it, we, we, have seen, we have seen that it worked for them, and I, I suspect it's going to work uh, for us too. Um, I was ordained in, in January 2002, and uh, the presbytery uh, decided, uh, the presbytery of Limpopo then, and that has been the the story of my ministry since uh, the president that on the day of my ordination uh, it would also be the day of licensing um, of uh, the then Mr. Peter uh, Ndo um, and the at that time, the presbytery used to ask uh, the licentiate, I think they were, we were called licentiates then, or a licensee, I'm not sure about the wording correctly, to prepare something of theological acumen for presentation to presbytery. And uh, on that day, uh, Mr. Ndo read from Romans chapter 8 and addressed the presbytery on the subject of predestination. So when, when this falls to me again, I remember, uh, I remember it vividly as if it was yesterday because uh, my ordination happened uh, approximately a year after my licensing and I was still fresh from the bruising questioning uh, from the presbytery after I delivered such a paper. But when uh, Reverend Ndo uh, finished delivery, the presbytery, I think, was just kind of mum. They asked one old minister to just say a word of thanks 
And I remember Muruti Maja saying, uh, such a difficult topic. That was 2002. And 20 years later, I can resonate with, with um, those words. It is one of the most difficult uh, subjects to, to go into. Um, when when uh, it was first suggested that mm -hmm. I may have to speak on this one, I remembered uh, an assignment I had to, to uh, throw in in church history around the Armenian controversy um, caused by uh, one uh, Armenian against the teaching uh, which was thought to be uh, by Calvin. So uh, I do not even remember what I wrote on that assignment and what the mark was, but I remember that it was uh, one of my first assignments that I had to, to put in for church history. What, what exactly <clears throat> is predestination? Um, the, the English word used here, predestinate, um, I, I, I thought uh, initially that it was to predestine, but um, the dictionary refers to it as predestinate. And um, uh, the, the, it's taken from the Latin word uh, prior destino. And this is the way that the Bible translators uh, have used to, to deal with the, an equivalent word from Greek prorizo, prorizo. And which, which in the calculation, in the bringing together of words, would have an equivalence of foreordaining, putting something before time. Um, porizo used in the New Testament. Always in the New Testament, it, it assumes that it is God who does it. So God is the subject, he's the one who foreordains. And, and expresses a thought that something has been appointed uh, or a situation has been predetermined. Um, in, in law, they talk about premeditated crime. So, so something that somebody thought of even before it happens and had a picture of, of the results. So this subject of predestination uh, I think for us to grapple properly with it, we need to we need to struggle with when did it start being a debate in the in in the church history? When when where do we get this name? Why do we why are we seized with this name? And I want us to to use it to in fact to use a stepping stone kind of questions to deal with it because it is such a huge, huge subject. Out of it, theologies were formed. 
And one such theology is, is a theology that for the past 20, 50 years has been doing the rounds and tweaking uh, the plan of God about humanity. A theology uh, that from the idea of predestination presupposes that once you are saved, you're always saved. Um, once saved, always saved. And so I think to, to grapple with that theology, to grapple with predestination, we must first see do do lay anything that is a building block towards it. And we must grapple with the idea that is it, is it our understanding that once somebody has been saved, they are saved forever? Because this theology has been built out of the idea that God, before the foundation of the earth, has determined who will be in heaven and who will not be. And this is, I think, uh, at the bedrock of of this theology or this, this doctrine. So I'm going to try and grapple with it within the context of once saved, always saved. And ask the question, are we dealing with predestination as a doctrine or as a dynamic? Is it is it a doctrine or is it a dynamic? Uh, and, and I'm going to try and uh, ask further questions to, for us to grapple with it. Once saved, maybe we need to also grapple with what do we understand by being saved? What does saved mean? And I want to submit a few uh, things about being saved. One, for me, being saved means to be freed from all sins. And to be exactly what God meant you to be when God made you to be restored to, to the perfect image of God. These three things, one, to be freed from all sins, to be exactly, exactly the spitting image of what God thought of when he made you. I can I can only imagine a discussion going on in Genesis. Let us make man in our image. And to be restored. And I think I like this. This, this is an, a, a definition I got from David Pawson in, in his book, Questioning the Idea of once saved, always saved. This restoration to the perfect image of God and the who else, who else uh, in heavens above, here on earth or below the earth can provide that perfect image of God except the son of God himself, Jesus Christ. So it means you are once saved, once you are restored to that perfect image, uh, Jesus Christ. So it means I am once saved when I'm actually like, like Jesus Christ through and through. So I'm so like Jesus Christ that if somebody was to put me here and put Jesus Christ here, they would not notice the difference. And once that happens to me, I am now fully saved. Uh, I'm not sure if 
so far. Se sa hamba ko. Goku bangi aku la faku. I need confirmation that I'm not talking alone. Uh, yeah. Yes, no. To my male, usa hamba ka ke mko. So uku se si si fike lele that we need to grapple with what what is God's plan and purpose about humanity about humanity um uh, I I I'm thinking of a psalmist asking what is man that you are so thoughtful of him? Would I be wrong if I was to assume that um, before I assume, Malan Nell says God has created men so that men could know God more, love God more, and serve God more. And sin has corrupted all that. We we now know ourselves more than we know God. We love ourselves and the world more than we know. We love and and uh, and, and respect God. We we don't serve God as as much as we we were created for. But another uh, giving is that God already had a family by the time he created man. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't have said, let us create man in our image. So God already had a family and he was happy with this family. He was happy with the son and he wanted more of this. And then a decision came, let us make men in our image. Uh, so sa salvation is a process for me of taking old sinful people like you and me and making us into new people. Now, I think it's Paul who writes it. Who I think he's writing to Timothy. So the will of God is that all men should be saved in Jalumus in the Bible. Yeah. Yes, 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 in Jalum God. Now, if God's will or God's wish is that all people should be saved. And where does this put the logic that he has predestined in the Jehovah's Witnesses calculation, 144,000 people to be in heaven and the rest to be lost? I mean, we are talking today, 8 billion people on earth. What, what happens to the rest of all these other billions? So I think let's deal now with the history of this theology backed by the idea of predestination. You know, it's easy for people to claim that their teaching, their doctrine uh, is based on scripture alone, but it's very difficult to do that in practice, to in practice put the scripture alone. I'm not sure if we have a Tembi here who can read for us. Uh, Romans chapter <laughs> eight. <laughs> Romans wow, chapter eight. Fundis. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in the in the in the Barcelona, a book. But let's read Romans eight from verse twenty-six to thirty. Um, can, can anyone read for us? Romans 8 from uh, 26 to 30. 
and I suspect that nobody wants to be a Tembi, but I've got, I've got my <laughs> English version. I... <laughs> well, I also have a, an English version for this. Sure, please read. Okay. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our infinities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. To 30. Oh, sorry about that. For whom he did for, for whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Amen. Amen. This, this is the word of God. Uh, Amen. You see, um, we are influenced either positively or, or negatively by the streams of thought throughout uh, generations of church history. So the truth of God uh, is easily contaminated by the tradition that the traditions that people have been handing over to us over and over and over. And, and those traditions have to be weighed um, in the light of the word of God. What is the plan? If salvation is a process of taking an old sinful person recycle them, make them useful to God again. If God could simply wish that, what stops him from doing it? Just getting all of us in heaven and no struggle. <laughs> uh, if, if we are so sinful that, that we shouldn't, we, we can't manage to get there. Would it be difficult for God to just blot us out, start a new, start a new project of, of people who are not going to contaminate his earth? In fact, the Bible shows signs that God actually thought of it at some stage, uh, decided it, in Genesis 6, there is a line that says, and God, God felt a great set. Why did I make man? And and he decided, no, no, I'm going to bring water to just wipe them up. Uh, uh, but God being God, he still preserved a remnant. Uh, people uh, be that. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's, it's the context proper. But look at the first thing that the man that God decided to preserve uh, to bring a new generation of people. Uh, what does he do the first time he gets out of, of M M Kumbi? He gets drunk, exposes himself naked in front of his own children. Um, so I think then God had to put in place the plan that was set before the beginning of the earth. Jesus Christ himself has come down. That is the plan, the plan of salvation. In the plan of salvation, uh, from this text that we have read, Fakuk, there are three things that I, I, I hear here. Uh, 
we, we are saved when we are set free from the penalty of sin. When, when the penalty that is deserved because of sin, when I am freed from it, when I get a get out of jail card, those of us who play Monopoly. And that is what Paul writing to the Romans calls justification. That is number one. I am saved when I am set free from the power of sin. That is sanctification. I am saved when I am free from the possibility of sin in glorification. And these three cannot happen all at once. You can't say on the 15th of August, 1974, I, uh, I was set free from the penalty of sin. I was set free from the power of sin. Sin can no longer control me anymore. And I was set free. Uh, from the possibility of sin. It is a process. And uh, my guess, and, and I, I think uh, David Person confirms it, is that that is only possible when we meet Jesus again. When Jesus has come, all the process would be fully completed. For as long as we are here on earth, uh, we may have started the journey of salvation, but it's not yet complete. So somebody who says, I was saved uh, in a crusade, Leonard Bonke, uh, is missing the point. They have started the journey. But why did we have this? Predestination uh, as a theology has its own history. Uh, most assume that it's, it's, it's been only a matter of controversy for about 400 years because uh, the two sides of discussion uh, known as the Calvinists, um, the Calvinists uh, from the teaching of Calvin, they, they, they assume, uh, who are saying salvation cannot be lost, and Armenian, or the Armenianist, uh, who argued that salvation can be lost. So these labels uh, are, are, are pulled based on the names of these two men who lived only um, around the 16th century, about four, four, five hundred years um, ago. Actually, uh, more than a thousand years before that, there has been a debate as to whether a person can be saved and never lose them. So we must go a further back than that um, to the first few centuries after, uh, under under the church fathers and. Um, uh, the early church. Uh, yes, there would be no documentation, uh, strict documentation, because it was through letters, counter letters, and uh, some of these letters were not uh, preserved. However, there is some in, uh, evidence to indicate what line they would have followed uh, had it been raised. The, the first issue that came under discussion was the issue of baptism. Uh, the church fathers shared with the apostles in a belief of the power of, of sacrament to wash sin away. You, if you read Acts chapter, 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 38, uh, Acts chapter 22, verse 16, and, and so on. Uh, and and you, you read the Nicene Creed, 
you see that as early as the second century already, uh, the church was believing that uh, sin can be washed. When people uh, get, get uh, baptized, uh, but that also raised a question of how to, re to remove sins then committed after baptism. So if, sin, if baptism removed sin, what then happened if you sin after baptism? Because now the second baptism was not allowed. You are not allowed to then go, is it okay, I've been baptized, uh, but I sinned. Can I get baptized again? At least let's wash this one away. And because of that confusion, people started putting away baptism until they are very close to death because then they are sure they cannot sin anymore after uh, that. So, so it became more important to die in, in a state of grace uh, rather than to die with with a uncertainty. I, I know this from, from um, my very recent experience. I've been to, to operate in theaters uh, several times, but this time around, I kind of had resigned. I was thinking, oh my God, if, if I don't come back, uh, please let me get the grace that when, when the trumpet sounds, uh, I, I go to heaven. So people, because of that, people began to, to, to classify sins. So some, some sins were serious enough to nullify baptism. So you, if you were baptized, the church had to say, but no, that one is the one that you can come confess and then we're done with it. But some serious sins were were taken to be serious enough that, that even your baptism doesn't uh, work anymore. Uh, since baptism could not be repeated, then uh, it was inevitable that people could lose, lose their, their salvation. Then uh, the other thing that came uh, to the church was persecution. Under persecution, others would... Uh, <laughs> The only way to survive uh, when the church was persecuted was to either denounce this faith, uh, recant, say, I don't believe in Jesus anymore, then they would let, let go of you. Uh, and there are those who persevered, who held on, hanged on to this faith that Jesus only is Lord, even when they were faced by a sword when many of saved, born again, baptized Christians were recanting, were saying, well, uh, if Jesus is Lord is going to get me killed, I don't believe in it anymore. But uh, lo and behold, the devil realized that the more Christian he killed, the more uh, Christian uh, increased the more those who believed in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, increased, and the more the purity of Christianity uh, is retained. So he stopped the uh, the persecutions. Now, when the persecution stopped, those who had earlier denounced the faith now came back. And those who were being slaughtered uh, during that time were saying, mm, this ones, are they serious? They left us here, Sissy, Fire, and so on. Now they are here, they want, they want to be part of this glory and so on. And then they started de de debating as to whether uh, denouncing Christ is a forgivable sin. But let me rush to, to where we are. Then, then um, in, in around uh, 400 years, a debate was taken um, also by Augustine and Pelagius. Augustine uh, came strongly, um, Pelagius uh, 
Firstly, who was horrified by the lacks of behavior within the church and orthodox in, with his beliefs and, and uh, his writing. Consent for morality and that led him to denounce substitution of sacraments uh, for holiness. He said, you just need to be holy. You can't uh, substitute holiness with sacraments. You must be holy. Uh, he preached the gospel of justification by faith alone. Pelagius is the first person to add the weight alone to justification by faith. Otherwise, Paul's phrase uh, was, we are justified by faith. And uh, Pelagius then added alone, he was followed by Luther um, on, on that. Uh, so Pelagius was saying, grace come to us primarily um, in the form of revelation enlightening our minds to understand how God wants us to live. So grace only, according to Pelagius, shows, shows us the way grace offers us the power to walk in it. Uh, but then Pelagius uh, argued, uh, it is up to us. He put a great emphasis on moral responsibility and its results. Uh, whether one is to be praised or, or blamed, rewarded or punished, uh, God commands nothing uh, which is impossible to us, uh, even perfection. And uh, Augustine came strongly against that teaching. Uh, the, the Bishop of Hippo, uh, he, he wanted Pelagius, uh, I think, excommunicated from the church because he thought this guy is teaching heresy. Um, and Augustine was a prolific writer. Uh, his reaction uh, to, to Pelagius, he was horrified that Pelagius' argument uh, ignores the original sin um, and so the, the early church was teaching that the original sin can actually be dealt with through baptism and this guy Pelagia says no you, you see baptism cannot replace the fact that you must live holy because your God is holy and, and so Augustine wrote extensively against this. And so the streams continue to widen. Uh, his reaction, uh, the reaction of, of uh, Augustine became an overreaction. Uh, when, when he can't understand why, why Pelagian would say forgiveness cannot, can, can deal only with your past, and not future sins. And so his teaching was, was now coming to a point where it says, if your sins are forgiven, even the ones that you're going to commit tomorrow have been forgiven already. So it, it widened. Uh, against the idea that men could do everything right, he swung to the opposite extreme when he was saying, men cannot do anything right. That is Augustine. He says, man is incapable of choosing anything wrong, especially not salvation. It is all of God who alone chooses who shall be saved and who will not. This led Augustine to deny that God wills all to be saved, as, as it is said in, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. So, his decree of predestination decides who will be given the, accept, the repentance and the faith. He was saying, even those that come to believe are those that already have their names written in the book. Uh, and in God's 
wisdom. He has decided on the number to be saved, a fixed quota, and no one can do anything to pre prevent that or uh, to prevent it from being fulfilled. Uh, believing as he did in a God who, who makes people believe, it is not surprising that then Augustine advocate forcible conversion. He actually used um, Luke 14 verse 23 to compel people. Uh, faith under Augustine was a matter, they could kill you if, if you, you do not uh, fall to toe the line. The debate went further. Luther and Erasmus found themselves uh, in this debate. Are you saved once saved or uh, are you not saved? And Luther followed the Augustinian uh, argument that God does it, you can't do it, anything about it, finish and try. And then the Armenian controversy, Calvin in, in his institutes. And, and I think the proper reading of Calvin uh, then shows that Calvin uh, was not saying only God does it and finish and plan. Uh, but those that came after him, it is actually Biza who, uh, who propounded the idea of predestination and those that followed Biza uh, claimed it to be a Calvinistic teaching. So to this day, people believe that predestination is the Calvinistic teaching. It's Calvin who teaches that God has decided on the quota, God has decided on the number, and, and there, is, there is nothing that can, can be done uh, about it. And Armenian, uh, Armenian was saying, no, 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 God gives you the grace. You, uh, when you believe, uh, you, you, you receive that grace. So I want to sum it up because I know it's, it's a huge subject for who I'm not going to be able to deal with it within this, this time, but also within uh, the limitations that I have today. That uh, salvation is offered freely. That is grace, but to receive it, you, you have to offer your faith. So otherwise, if it was not so, salvation could be given to people that Calvin actually called reprobates, people unrepentant sinners, and even with their unrepentance. Uh, so we, we are saved when we, we accept through faith the grace of salvation. The question that we must be seized with when we deal with the issue of our own salvation is, can I interrupt the process of salvation? The process has started. I have been uh, convinced. I have uh, been brought face to face with the gospel truth, and um, I accepted it. But can I interrupt that process of salvation? Or as soon as that happens to me, I receive the Holy Spirit. It is a done deal. It doesn't matter how sinful my actions tomorrow are because I have received the Lord Jesus Christ, it was done. Can I delay the process of, uh, of justification? Can I just delay my process of salvation? Paul says when he writes, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Can I stop it? Or put differently, can anyone who is saved lose their salvation. 
is it possible? And I want to submit that, yes, we, we can lose our salvation. Um, you, you could start well. That is why Paul writes to, to, other, to, to the other church, you guys, who has bewitched you? You have started so well. Uh, but why are you turning away from that? Because you, you are actually blocking your way towards salvation. But when he writes, the Bible always talks about uh, salvation in terms of confidence, uh, not certainty. So you hear the words like, I am confident that the Lord who has begun a good work in you will complete it. He, he is saying, this God has the ability to, to complete it. And I have confidence that in your case, it will be so, but it needs you to work with God. Um, and I'm not advocating uh, salvation by works. Uh, I am saying faith is shown out in what you do. Uh, it, it, it does not say I'm certain that uh, you, you are saying, I mean, uh, Jesus had chosen 12 guys, but one of them still they betrayed him. Um, the other uh, still uh, rejected him, whether it's rejected, denied him, and, and so on. So you can effectively, and, and finally, let's, let's use the analogy of the potter. Uh, God sends Jeremiah to the potter's house to look at the potter and this wheel is turning, but the clay is not, is not becoming what the potter had intended to, to, to do. And it says in the Bible, uh, then the potter clumps up that clay and uh, puts it back on the wheel to create something totally different. The, the original idea, the predestination of, of the clay, of the, of the potter was that the clay would turn out into a beautiful vessel. But because the, the clay did not cooperate with the hand of the potter, eventually uh, the clay is turned into some ugly vessel. And, and you, could, you could quote many other things. Uh, you could say, no, no, but God predetermines why, why did he turn Pharaoh's heart hard? But if you read that very narrative correctly, you see that for the first seven times, it is totally Pharaoh who decides to harden his heart. Only from seven to 10, that does God help him? So for the first, so the initial steps of rejection, it is us who choose to grieve the Holy Spirit, Christians who grieve the Holy Spirit, Christians who refuse the grace, Christians who after having tasted the goodness of God, still uh, choose, choose differently. You can lose your salvation if you don't work with the hand of the potter. And I want to say predestination is a dynamic relationship. By virtue of creation, God had predestined that you belong to heaven. You do not belong to hell. Hell is created for those who are no longer of use to God. And if we have reached the state of uselessness, when we receive the grace of salvation by faith and working with God, in the end, when he finally comes back, and on that day, we can proclaim, I was once saved and I'm always saved. Thank you for tonight. Um, I think for taking it forward, it may be to deal with questions and answers. Thank you for.
Sisi kuona kani bendi tete ndeto ndeto ola lo. Uko na mfundi sikuwenze kuto ukuluma while emute emute. Eh oh yes. Shabu hamko ni thank you so much. Thank you thank you thank you. Wow. Um friends uh, here we are and um, uh, indeed we are dealing with a a very difficult subject yeah predestination and uh, now i uh, hand over to to us to ask questions and make comments to me Uh, good evening, Bazalani. I'm not sure if I'm audible. I'm having issues with network. Yes. Okay. okay. We can hear you. All right. Thank you. Yes. Um, and thank you, um, Reverend Maharani. I think from me, this was also one of the most difficult and complicated sessions um, that I've ever had. So, but... Um, I just wanted also to check with you here um, how you would then um, explain the, the, the scriptures that actually, well, according to my view, validates um, predestination and the role of mankind in, in salvation. <clears throat> because uh, my understanding is if um, for some reason um, we think that we as men participate or we add value to ourselves being saved. Um, it, it, it can actually mean that we, we, we are able to, to make or to contribute to our own salvation, which now means um, we, we are having a, a work-based salvation. So um, the issue of, of, of now saying that um, men are still responsible for some reason um, to, to, to make a, a contribution towards their salvation it means that God needs help um, in terms of saving his, his own people. And also the scriptures of Romans 9 and also some scriptures from John 6. I think I will just ask uh, just two questions. Uh, maybe you can help me. The first one will be from Romans 9, which says, um, there are people that um, God has created um, as objects of his wrath, um, meaning that um, when God created the world, he knew that there will be those who are, um, are made for glory and there will be those who are made for, 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 for wrath, meaning that in his, in his idea, he was already aware that there will there will always be people who will not make it, um, you know, just because that's how he has determined it. He also gives that example of, of a porter to say that um, when you are the porter, you decide if you want to use this pot um, for glory or you want to use this pot for discarding. If, if you decide that, this pot that has got three legs, uh, I'm going to use it to cook for, for the guests. But this one that has got only one leg, I think I will just decide not to use it at all, but discard it. So I want you to explain to me that interpretation of, of Romans 9, even when he speaks of um, Jacob and Esau, to say between the two, he made a choice to say, I will choose this one, and I will hate this one. So, so now um, you, you ask yourself that, why is God choosing certain people and not choosing others? You know, and that which is another story to say, um, he, he, he is God, he decides however he wants. And the last one, on John 6, he mentions that um, you cannot come to, 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 to God or you, Jesus says, no one can come um, to me except God who enables them. So that also helps us to understand that as humans, we are incapable of choosing um, salvation. It, it is God who makes it possible for us to say, I believe in Jesus Christ. So 
in my understanding also, even in that faith of believing, he still assists you um, to accomplish um, what he has started. So he does not give you the faith only for you to lose it. Otherwise, then it means he has failed to, to accomplish what he wanted in you. So if that happens, because I think um, the other question will be, but there are those who renounce or who denounce the faith and they never continue with the faith. So the question becomes, who has failed there? Um, is it God who has started and could not finish or the people were never um, saved to begin with? So I will stop here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yay. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you to me. Thank you so much. Um, Tolle. Yeah, get all. Yeah, I'm from I'm going to go to see you, see young man. Go see ya. It's not like such a banish. See ya. Okay, I'm trying to see if you have a mistake. Are you okay, but I'm running out. Column fund is a second young and a mistake. Uh, cabin is also been such a good so a technology. Um, um, my mandibule presentation from who reverend. Uh, then the it's a it's 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 a linkage and the funoko it's actually between the foreknowledge of God and the predestination because uh, it, it, Isuka Pago Romans, chapter eight, Glanda, Obes Funda Go. Um, uh, Isiti, he knew us before we were even born. So uh, that and e, e predestination and what now happens between in our lives, how does it, it link the foreknowledge? How does it link to e? A predestination, if I can uh, be cleared on that. Thank you, Mkunis. Nkoska Kulu says, Siya Bonga Kakulu. Yes, yes, yes. Evonkon. I think uh, maybe let's clarify this. Uh, one, I think that predestination exists. Uh, God created with a predetermination Yoguba Umtu must be enjoyed by the Godhead. So Uguti Umtu along the way fades uh, rejects this offer, does not talk to the failure of God, but it talks to the uncooperativeness of, of human beings. Because God still gave um to um, free will. So you see, the common view uh, to predestination means that individuals are are you are chosen to be saved by God, where else others are not chosen to be. And the Bible doesn't actually uh, say that. Uh, and this this goes back to what the the, the question that uh, biblical scholars ask of the scandal of particularity. Why did God choose to pin his name with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Why, why do we stop at Jacob when, when, we, call, when we call upon God? When we, when we say the God of Mdima Abraham, Mdima Isaac, Mdima Jacobo, and, and when you look at all these three guys have, have had their fair share of faults, 
and he doesn't go over to Joseph, who, if you read his story, actually did not have any blemish from the beginning to the end, from from the pill, uh, from the pit to uh, to palace and and so on. Now, the the Calvinistic idea of predestination is that individuals are predestined to salvation. But the, the Armenian approach is that not individuals, but a collective is predestined for service. So God says to Israel, you did not choose me. I did not choose you because you were worthy of being chosen. You are worthy because I chose you. So God chooses Israel out of a plethora of possibility to show what it looks like to have a community that is in service of God. So the predestination, the Armenian way, is to a people, not to persons. And those that then believe that uh, because of the doctrine of predestination, uh, the grace of God is irresistible. You cannot resist. I mean, uh, they cannot be further from the truth. We have been in services where people received Christ and still others came out of that service angry that the preacher uh, was insulting them. Uh, because it, your salvation, your total salvation, and as, as I, say, I say, Faku, is about the process. Uh, being saved, you have been saved, you are being saved, and you will be saved. Uh, saved from the penalty of sin, saved from uh, the power of sin, saved from the possibility of sin. So those that use the, the analogy of the potter uh, end up falling to the trap of saying human beings are made as robots, that their free will is incapacitated. It is this free will that actually uh, redirects the journey of the soul. Now, foreknowledge, um, foreknowledge uh, is the essence of, of predestination. God foreknew uh, that the end of humanity must be in paradise, in communion with God. But the free will, if not properly used, it, it, it does not reduce God's responsibility for your salvation to you helping him out. You, there is nothing you can do to help God out, but you can resist this grace. You, you, the destiny of where your soul ends is dependent on the choices that you make. If you choose to grieve the Holy Spirit, you are choosing hell. It is not the Holy Spirit choosing hell for you. Um, you, you are born again, according to the Armenian, after repentance and faith. <laughs> When, when you believe, you, so the, the Calvinian, the Calvinist, uh, or the so-called Calvinist, because I want to assume that Calvin did not actually teach predestination the way that it's projected to us, assumes that you are born again before you get, you, you, before you repent. But if you read the Bible, uh, even before you got baptized, they would say, repent believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, be baptized and receive the Holy Spirit. This is the process. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to do. So you, you cannot 
be in a position to claim that you have helped God save you. Um, if you are saved, it means you, you were drowning, you were helpless, hopeless. Somebody came to your aid. Now, let's use this, this analogy of somebody drowning, uh, Faku, and somebody who knows how to save throws in um, in tambo. Uguti bambelela kule ntambo, sigu kupe emanzini. Kau bambelele ntambi, entanje, wapuma emanzini in state of drowning. You have no claim, Uguti, I have saved myself. But kagu ponswa in tambo, uwe, when you are drowning, you have the choice. You bambelele ntanje ni, oka nyo ugu yeka. Uma uyeka, you are changing the destiny. Yeah, your destiny becomes that of drowning rather than that of being saved. I'm not sure if uh, Ubutumi uh, is being helped by this uh, understanding. I was trying to look at the passage he quoted in, 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 in uh, Romans 9 and without seeing the, the, the verse exactly, uh, but I'm, I'm looking at, at verse 19 of Romans 9 already. Well, then you might say, why does God uh, blame people for not responding? Haven't they simply uh, done what he makes them to do? And, and Paul answers that, never, not, it's not possible. <laughs> it is your duty if you're drowning and a rope is thrown at you to choose to hold on to the, to the rope and the one who has power, who is on the side of life, Agotzale from Emanzini to Indal Enobo. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Bazaruan. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I hope um, uh, Uputumi uh, has been answered. If not, uh, I, I take it, um, Uguti. Um, uh, it, it is because of the complexity of this topic. Um, it, it, it's a topic that even if you, uh, you, you ask those who, who, who are Presbyterians today or Calvinists, they will never agree mm -hmm. uh, on, on whether to reject or affirm this doctrine. Is it a follow up question, or maybe you feel you were not answered? Yes, okay. Sia. Oh, Engo Sampundis. No, um, the Fumene in Bendur, because uh, as I was saying, I was looking for the link between the foreknowledge and predestination, and then the Fumene in it is free will that must be exercised yeah. Uh, yeah. with caution. Yes. Yeah. Th thank you so much. All right. Um, friends, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I, 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 I was tempted to, to ask uh, Uke to to, to say a vote of thanks on behalf of all of us, uh, maybe if uh, uh, I would ask him to do that, then after he has done that, we pronounce the benediction. Come again, come again, uh, uh, Fago. I did not get the last part. Oh. Oh, okay, then City, if you don't mind, if you can just uh, do the vote of thanks uh, to Umfunt uh, Makakan and those who who were able to 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 connect to be with us here. Oh no, thanks, thanks, Father. Uh, this is a very uh, controversial topic. It needs a, a combination of um, being saved and also part of academia. Um, 
I had a uh, uh, quota uh, from Calvin. Um, um, Siatinga Gumbulelwa um, Ngoba um, Sometimes Utolabanda Banning uh, Ukololabo will break Uma a uh, Besala uh, Gimtabang, a corner with predestination. Uh, they get confused and uh, I'm happy uh, with uh, you brought us closer about the faith and also about the grace. Uh, thank you. Sibonga Ngazo Zombi Lizanda said, Enkos, Senga Tinkosi Ngaksiza, whilst you are recuperating. The bonnet would know Saban Begil. Hence, a Sam Taylor, a Somand and Melele, which a Ubuye Utola Manda, and be dynamic as we've always been. Sabonga cool. Thank you. Sabonga Mawan, Sabonga cool. Friends, I I, I have a sense that uh, uh, people would want us to, to continue with this topic. Uh, allow me to say uh, that is noted and uh, maybe we can, we can consider that. And uh, one like a chat box that other people feel that uh, we still need more time to look at the topic. Thank you so much for being here and uh, setting aside your time uh, to listen to Umfuntu Makakane. Thank you so much. Uh, let us pray and close with a word of, um, with, with benediction. Baba Sbongi leka kulu mne ni manda onke utandulu wako, ububele bako, na kukonke, ositlaka nisanga ako, kondisisa, Loko kuintando ya kapelele. Sia kubonga ngosi nge istaka saku kumfuntu makakane. E, Wekute noba umzimba ungavu mikoto wa umoya wabane tumekelelu. Wafisa tiku wito ingwe lukubanda tikule platform. Sibu wanga mandu mnige wona kutakani ipagonke. Baba wito ingwele. Senga atike ngosu nga sisa songe. Sikundi sise ukuthi wena unenjongo nge mpilo zetu futi sikondi sise nukuti uwe o wazikonke nge mpilo zetu iba no mwenye unu mwenye ustine sazo lala weluli santa sako pezgo mpilo zetu ube ngutiko wetu sube nga bantwa na bako siya bonga kulu mzali sinigela kue konke kamene le nko sietu chesu manja unapakate umosa we nko sietu chesu kristu tando liga nkulu nkulu tele mwenguele Malsale kut songe manje kuzek be parate. Amen. Amen. Siabonga bazalane bam siabonga. Uti kwanzine. We love you. Amen. Amen. Fundis happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy birthday to everybody. I think there's more than two who have the same which actually stay. But yes. Yes, what is it? Good night. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.